All right, let's do this example here. So we have cosine x to the fourth minus sine x to the fourth all over 2 times cosine squared x minus 1, and all of that equals 1. All right, so where to begin? I'm going to begin on the left because that looks a whole lot more complicated than the right-hand side. And then I notice the top, and that is the difference between two squares. All right, so side note, what's the difference between two squares? So if you had x squared minus 9, and you wanted to factor that, because each of those are perfect squares, you would say the square root of x squared is x, so x goes there, x goes there. The square root of 9 is 3, so 3 goes there, 3 goes there. 1 gets a plus, 1 gets a minus. All right, so this is the same kind of thing. We've got cosine to the fourth. Well, something to the fourth is really the same as cosine squared squared, right? So all of this right here, that can be like my x squared was in this example, or like my 9 was in the example. Same thing. All right, so we're going to factor that. So the numerator factored becomes cosine squared x minus sine squared x times cosine squared x plus sine squared x. All of that is over. 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So um, another note I want to make while I'm doing this one here is um, I'm going to work on the denominator, um, continuing, continuing, continuing on the denominator, I'm sorry, the numerator, but I keep writing the denominator each time. So for each line you write, you have to write the whole identity. Don't let your denominator disappear just because you're not working on that. All right, so hey, I noticed this right here, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, so we can make a substitution there and 1 times anything is itself, so now I'm left with cosine squared x minus sine squared x all over 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And the numerator, hey, that's the difference of two squares again. Let's factor that again. So now I've got cosine x minus 1 and I've got uh, oh, not minus one and back up minus cosine x minus sine and cosine x plus sine and all over two cosine squared x minus 1. All right, so I'm going to stop right now and I'm going to um, talk about something and that's called, um, I don't know, it's a technique I call watch where you're going. All right, so I'm watching where I'm going and everything I've done is perfectly correct, but I want to end up with the right hand side as 1, right? I mean I want to end up with the left hand side as 1 so it'll match the right hand side as 1. Well in order to get the left hand side to be 1 the numerator has to be exactly the same as the denominator. So this step that I did right here even though it's a perfectly legitimate algebra step, what did it do for me? Well it might have not done anything for me because I have cosine squared in the denominator, but now I got rid of my cosine squared in the numerator. I don't know if that was such a wise step. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to not do that step. And I, and I did this on purpose to show you that sometimes uh, when you proceed, you get to a point and you say, that didn't do me any good. I'm going to try a different route. So I'm going to try a different route. So um, I'm going to open a new page here, and I'm going to pick up from where we left off our last good step. So cosine squared minus sine squared over 2, cosine squared minus 1. All right, 
So I don't want to factor the top because that really didn't do anything good for me. Well, what I notice is I've got a cosine squared in the numerator. I got cosine squared in the denominator. I got to somehow get rid of this sine squared. So I'm going to make a substitution and I'm going to substitute uh, 1 minus cosine squared for that. Alright, so we've got cosine squared minus and I'm going to substitute 1 minus cosine squared x for that. Remember that comes from the identity sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1 and then if you subtract cosine squared x from both sides you get 1 minus cosine x. Alright, and then all of that is over 2 times cosine squared x minus 1. Now, notice when I made this substitution, this is like super, super important. Notice the whole substitution went in parentheses, right? And see there's this minus sign out in front. If you don't have your parentheses there, things are not going to turn out. So whenever you make a substitution like that, make sure you're putting it in parentheses as necessary. So let's distribute this negative right here. Let's do that next. So now I've got cosine squared x minus 1, and then a minus a minus is a plus. So that's cosine squared x all over 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And you guessed it, a cosine squared and another cosine squared are two of them. So 2 cosine squared x is minus 1 all over 2 cosine squared x minus 1, and this indeed equals 1, and there we go, we've proven that identity.